So on earth we have the latitudes and longitudes. Now these are the only two things I need to know if I want to know the position of anything on earth. But what about the night sky? If I want to know the position of some star that I like, how would I do that? Let's find that out. So coordinate systems with origin are basically the building blocks of every measurement, especially if it's position. Because if I want to know someone's position, I want to know it relative to something which is its origin. For example, if I want to tell the position of this camera, which is actually from nearly about one meter from me, I would say that this is one meters in the front direction. And if I use the coordinate systems of physics, like the famous Cartesian coordinates, the x, y, and z axis, I would say that taking the front as the x axis, that this camera is about one meter from me in the x direction. And there are several more coordinate systems out there which we use according to our need. For example, for cylindrical and spherical symmetries, we use the cylindrical and spherical coordinates, which comes pretty handy. Similarly, here on Earth, if we want to make some kind of a measurement of someone's position, we use the latitudes and longitudes. For these, we have the origins of the Greenwich, which is in England, and our equators. But this coordinate system is only used to specify the positions on Earth. Why don't we use it for the sky? For example, if I want to know the position of the star Proxima Centauri, why don't I have a set of coordinates for that, like latitude and longitude? Well, the problem is that we are rotating and because we are rotating with the Earth, so the latitudes and longitudes do not change. But for the stars, if you want to assign some kind of coordinate, what would be your origin? They are going to change. However, thankfully, we have a few coordinate systems in astronomy to tackle this problem. But here are the things. The first one is, as you already know, that the Earth rotates, so stars move. This coordinate system should accompany this problem. And the second thing is that different positions on Earth will see different sky, which means that the star's position would be different for different places on Earth. So how do we fix these? So there are basically three types of coordinate systems in astronomy. The first two are the ones which change with time. And the third one is the one which does it. Mm. Kind of, because the origin itself moves, so what can you say? I'm going to discuss the first two in this one. But before moving on to any of those coordinate systems, you should understand these two things which we are going to use often. The first one is the celestial sphere. Now it is actually the imaginary sphere on which we place all the stars which we see in the night sky on it. Now, it has no relation to its distance or brightness whatsoever. It's only the position of the stars. As you will see if there was no Earth sitting right at its center. The second thing to understand is the zenith, which is actually the point directly overhead you. Now, since you're out there in the night sky enjoying with your friends, the view of the universe uncovering the deeper secrets of the cosmos. Now zenith would be the point which is directly overhead you and it is denoted by the letter z. Now there should be an exact point opposite to this and it's called the nadir. It is denoted by z dash. The first one is the horizon coordinate system, which is actually the easiest and the simplest out of the all. So this is you and the sphere above you is your sky. All the stars you see are actually located on this pair. And there is this line joining you and your zenith and the nadir. The perpendicular to this line is your horizon. So suppose this x is the star you want to look at right now. And this is the star you want to know the position of. So we need the two coordinates. Now in the process of setting these coordinates up, we need some kind of an origin. And what could be a greater origin than the north-south line? <laughs> yeah, so let's take this north-south line running right here as the origin. And this line also runs on this pair right here. And this is called the observer's meridian. So all you need to do now is just draw this great circle of the north-south line and use this as your reference. So we are basically done here right now. And all you need to do now is just basically draw a great circle of this star. Now this great circle is definitely going to intersect your horizon and this point of intersection is actually what is used for the measurement. So now we are actually going to take two angles. The first angle would be actually 
the angle which the north-south line makes with your point of intersection. Now this angle is actually on the horizon and this is represented by the capital A. This is called your azimuth. Similarly, there should be a vertical angle which the star makes with the vertical line or, or your vertically the great circle. Now this angle is represented by the small a and it's called the altitude. And that's it. These are the two coordinates of the horizon system, which is the azimuth and the altitude, which is pretty simple and easy. But again, you already know the shortcoming. The first one is obviously it's going to change with time as the star moves across the sky. And the second one is that different people on Earth will have different horizons. So basically, they will have different stars in different positions. So moreover, this coordinate system cannot be used for a larger scale. This is pretty good if you live in the same town or in the neighborhood. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Now coming to our second coordinate system, it is the equatorial coordinate. This coordinate system is actually a bit more intuitive and it makes a lot more sense. But beware, the things are actually going to get a little complex here because we are introducing another great circle, which is actually the celestial equator. Now this great circle is actually the circle parallel to the inclination of the Earth's equator. Wait. How do I know the inclination of the equator in this pair? Well, it is actually your latitude. The place you live in, the latitude is basically the angle which your place makes at the center of the earth related to the equator. So it's basically the same angle at which the equator is tilted relative to your place. So this is you, this is your sphere, celestial sphere. And imagine this is our earth, just rotated slightly and this angle right here, just matching to the equator of the Earth, is the celestial equator. So here's a quick tip which I want you to use. It is actually the location of the North Pole in your area, or actually the North Star in your area. It is actually the only star which doesn't move in the night sky, so it's pretty easy to find and it's right there in the North. Now, if the North Star is high in the night sky, you are living in the Northern Latitudes and your celestial equator would be near your horizon. Now, what you can do is imagine a sphere and this end of the North Pole as the northern end of the Earth. Now, the plane which is perpendicular to this or this one right here should be your celestial equator. Now, as the Earth rotates, the stars follow the circular paths and these paths are actually parallel to the celestial equator. And if you have ever seen a star trail before, you must understand this, these circles are the diagonal circles. So now we are ready with all of the things and all we have extra here is this celestial sphere. This is your horizon and all other familiar things which we already talked about. Now you can see that we need now a different kind of origin because our older origin was actually related to the horizon which is not same for all. This origin should actually be with the celestial equator. So similarly, we also had the older, the north-south lines prime meridian. It should be cutting the celestial equator too. And this point of cut in the southern side is actually taken as the origin, represented by R in this diagram. Again, all we need to do now is just draw the great circle of the star again. But this time, we are going to take its intersection with the celestial equator. Now since the stars in the night sky move in a direction which is opposite to the direction of the Earth's rotation, which is west to east, the stars rotate from east to west. So the angle which we want to measure now, it should be measured westwards because the star is going westwards. The opposite wouldn't make a lot of sense. And now again, similarly like the last time, we have the two arc lengths and these are the new coordinates, which is the RJ and JX. The RJ is actually called the R angle. And since its name suggests, this coordinates change with time. And another coordinate we have here is actually the declination and it is represented by delta. Now, the declination thankfully doesn't change. However, since the R angle RJ rotates with time, we represent this mostly in the units of time which is 360 degrees equal to about 24 hours. This gives us about 15 degrees for every one hour. 
So now what we have in hand are the two coordinates. One of them which changes with time and the other one doesn't. Now that's a lot of progress. And the one that changes with time is also quite intuitive. Because now we know that the star's position would change by how much degrees in how many minutes. So it's not that absurd. And as far as declination is concerned, this doesn't change at all. Now the reason why we have solved these two problems here is that because we have taken the origin of celestial equator. The celestial equator would be actually the best origin which we can take. So now we have a common thing which links all the places on earth. Equator. So how about the coordinates of the North Star? What would be its coordinates? Well, since the things are measured from south to north and the North Star lies in the north, it's uh, our angle should actually be 180 degrees and as it doesn't change it will always remain the same its our angle would be uh, 180 degrees or 12 hours in time now coming to its declination the angle which it makes with the equator is obviously 90 degrees so delta is 90. now another interesting thing about the north star which i really like is that the inclination of the north star with your horizon is actually equal to your latitude and this is all true and you can easily see with some geometrical twists and turns in this diagram this also means that if you live on the equator the angle of the north star should be equal to your latitude which is zero degrees and it should be directly at your horizon and your star trail should so look something like this and if you live in the northern hemisphere or the north pole to be exact the North Star should be directly above you, which is your latitude at its 90 degrees. I'm probably way too biased towards the North Star and the North Pole. Well, you can argue, it's pretty cool. Now you can also observe something from the diagonal circles that the stars that are especially near the pole, some of them and a lot of them just do not set. Now these are stars which are called the circumpolar stars and they actually never just fall below the horizon. So this is where I'm going to conclude this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the universal coordinate system in which we have the right ascension as a coordinate which replaces the R angle and the declination stays the same. Now, it's quite interesting and I'm also going to explain something that how stars and our sun actually becomes circumpolar above 66.5 degrees of latitude. Stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.